Johnny Dollar. Morris Parkley, Johnny. New Jersey State Mutual. Well, it's about time, Morris. How are you? Bad. I've got troubles, Johnny. Forty thousand dollars worth. Don't give it another thought. Just mail me a check. Yeah, I wish it were that easy. Also, I wish it was a check. What do you mean? I mean, it's all in cash. Oh, okay. Then I'll fly on down there and pick it up. Yeah, I wish you could. But there's a hitch. His name is Walter P. Doniger. Who's he? Policy beneficiary. We can't find him. Well, maybe I'll get lucky and not be able to find him either. Then with 40 G's in my hot little hand. Yeah, I'll be breathing right down your hot little neck. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Now, Amari, the commission on 40000 for me if I find this man. You want to come down and talk about it? Why, sure. <laughs> The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the New Jersey State Mutual Life Insurance Company Home Office, Trenton, New Jersey. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Donninger-Donninger matter. Expense account item one, twenty-six ninety for a cab to Bradley Field Airport, a plane to Trenton, then a taxi into Morris Parkley's office. It was lunchtime, so Mari dragged me over to lunch at Hildebrecht's. Look, are you just going to sit here and stuff yourself, or can I tell you about this case? Morris so will help me. Nobody, but nobody knows how to fix soft-shell crabs like a South Jerseyite, so I'm going to make the most of it. Going to? You have. <laughs> now, listen. Mm -hmm. His name is Walter P. Doniger the Seven. The what? The whole family was a bunch of screwballs. Bums. Except for Walter P. the First, mm -hmm. who cleaned up on gunpowder and cannonballs about the time Georgie Washington rode across the Delaware. <laughs> well, that's that, and it was delicious. But his descendants haven't done a lick of work since. And that makes them screwballs, am I right? Sure. But nothing to do but loaf their lives away? Bums. Crack uh, would there be anything more, gentlemen? Well, I... Uh, uh... No thanks, Waiter. We've got to get out of here. Just All a right. yes, Sir, here you are. Anyhow, Johnny, this Walter P. the Seventh is the last of the line. Now that his sister Minnie has died, here you are, Waiter. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. She left him this 40000 insurance you mentioned. Right. So you've got to find him, Johnny, and pay it to it. But in cash? That's what the policy reads. In cash, in hand. Just like that $5 tip you just gave the waiter. Hmm? Right, Johnny, that's it. What? Five dollars... Hey, wait oh, a minute. Come on, I come on, Maury. You can tag it out of my expense yeah, account. Five dollars. Come hey. on. Okay. Okay. Anyhow, that money has to be paid within ten days of her death, Johnny. So that gives you just less than a week from now. Well, Maury, that. Uh... Otherwise, we pay him an additional thousand for every additional week or fraction thereof. You issued a policy like that? No, I personally. And you call him a screwball. The point is that he's disappeared. You think he might be dodging you, Maury, just to build up his take? Possibility. I wouldn't put it beyond him. Mm. What's the address given on the policy? Addresses, Johnny. Eight of them. Eight? Every time he'd move, his dying sister would give us a new one. So we list it. Well, all right, then. If she only died recently, then his no, last no, address no, would... No, no, no. He isn't there. And he left no word about where he'd go next. Hey, hey, hey you better watch it. Yeah. All right, lights change. Come on. Well, uh... Tell me, Mari, is there any pattern to the way that he's moved around? Pattern? Mm. I hadn't thought of that. Well, you should have. It may give us an answer. Yeah. Well, here's the office. We'll take a look. Right. Here we are. Now, he started here in Trenton. Mm -hmm. Then he lived down in Atlantic City for a while. And Bloomfield, Cranford, Dumont... East Rutherford, Franklin, Gibbstown, and Highbridge. In other words, all over the state. You know, that makes any kind of a pattern, Johnny. Well, it sure does, Marty. It does? Sure. Don't you see? Atlantic City, Bloomfield, Cranford, and so on, ending up with Highbridge right through the alphabet, Marty, from A to H. Hey, you're right. So it's easy. Whatever he's gone now begins with the letter I. If he sticks to the pattern. Yeah. But why all the wandering around? Is he running away from something, or is it just a matter of building up the insurance he'll get? I don't know. 
Anyhow, now, you have the answer. Find a town beginning with the letter I. There is one, and you've got him. Yeah, thanks a lot. But which town beginning with an I if there's more than one? Oh, yeah. I didn't think of that. You got an atlas, Morty? Hmm? Yeah. yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, right in front of my nose. Help yourself. All right, now let's see. Okay, here we are. Hmm. Oh, great. Now, what's the matter? Listen. Imlay's Town, Indian Mills, Interlaken, Iona, Iceland, plus about a half dozen more, from one end of the state to the other. Yeah, yeah, no good. Well, it's all right with me if you want to pay me plenty of travel money to prowl around after oh, him. Oh, fine, that's fine. Then he'd be in the very last town that you'd hit. <laughs> it's a possibility. Boy, I guess the only thing we can do is write the city hall in every place beginning with an I and hope he'll cooperate. Meantime, time is running out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe there's a better pattern for us. Well, sure. Like you say, the alphabetical one. So it'll either cost that extra thousand a week or you'll run up too big an expense account. No, wait a minute. Look, don't you see? There's more to the pattern. Like what? And how much will it cost? Stop looking smug. Murray, I'll make you a proposition. Oh, you will? Mm -hmm. Let me try just one of these towns. This one here. Interlocker? Mm hmm. Well, why pick that one? If I don't find Mr. Walter P. Doniger, the seventh there, you won't owe me a cent. But if I do... Yeah. Then what? Then you tack an extra thousand onto my commission. Okay? What? Even above your expense account and all that? Okay. It's a deal. And now, Johnny... Good. Now, now, look. Do you mind telling me what this magical key is that you found? The pattern of his wanderings? Not at all. Look, Mari, it's right here in front of your nose. Right here in the atlas. This ever happened to you? You're driving down a long highway or working late, and then monotony makes you feel drowsy. Perk up with no dose. No dose keeps you alert with the same safe refresher found in coffee. Yet no dose is faster, handier, more reliable. Absolutely not habit forming. The safe way to stay alert without harmful stimulants. No dose. All I can see is the old hunter's going through the alphabet and his wanderings. That leaves you with 11 towns beginning with the letter I to investigate. All right, look here at the population figures. The population? Mm -hmm. huh? Now, first was Atlantic City with something over 60,000. Uh -huh. That's not including the annual summer vacation mob that always descends on the place. So? Then came Bloomfield, 49,000. Uh -huh. Less than Atlantic City. In mm -hmm. spite of the fact that a couple of other towns beginning with B have more. Well, then here we have Cranford, 17,500, less again. Don't you see now, Maury? Oh, sure, sure, Johnny. Heck, you're right. Great. Oh, sure, each time he's moved up one notch in the alphabet, he has moved down one notch in population. <clears throat> what a caper. And see here, after Cranford, he was in Dumont. Sure, sure thing. After two money, he, he could have gone to Elizabeth or East Orange or East Patterson. Yes, but they have more people than Dumont, so he picked East Rutherford with a population just under Dumont. Right. And so on, all the way to the letter H for Highbridge, the last address you have on him. Hmm. And if you carry on just one more step, here, yeah. it has to be interlocking. He's got to be an interlocking if he's stuck to this crazy pattern. Well, I'll be done. Now, you think... Uh... You think I'm still wrong about calling him a screwball? Well, unless he's running away from something, Maury. The law, maybe? Walter P. the Seventh? Never. Well, then I'd say he's kind of cute. Cute? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, he knows that every week you fail to pick up his trail, he puts you on the spot for another grand. I think he's bats. Maybe. But at least he's got a sense of humor. Pretty expensive one for us. Just the sort of thing you'd expect of him. Well, Maury, if the pattern holds... And it's his own gag, so he's got to play fair with it. Yeah. I will find him smugly sitting around in the town of Interlaken. Okay. Sounds fine. Great. But what if this Sherlock Holmes deduction of yours turns out to be all wrong? <laughs> 
There's only one way to find out, Mari, isn't there? Yeah. Good luck. You'll need it. Expense account item two, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. I headed east then on 33, a main highway through Heightstown, Freehold, and Ocean Grove, and then north in a roundabout way to Interlaken, a small but very nice resort town that isn't much heard of because it's so completely overshadowed by nearby Asbury Park. In uh, trying to find a city hall, I ended up at the old New York and Long Branch Railroad Station. I pulled to a stop beside a group of men loading stuff onto a freight car. The most intelligent looking of the lot was a character of, oh, maybe 35 and badly in need of a shave. Hey, uh, wait a minute. Uh, say that again, buddy. I asked for directions to City Hall, that's all. Uh, I thought I'd recognize that voice of yours. Uh, your name is Johnny Dollar, ain't it? That's right. Makes any difference. Ah, uh, how about that? Johnny Dollar, the big insurance investigator, huh? No well, I'm pleased to meet you, Johnny. Thank you. Now, uh, what's a big shot like you doing around a place like this, huh? Well, does that make any difference? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, you want to know what I think? I'm betting you tailed somebody here, huh? <laughs> Am I right? Well, possibly. But look, where sure is... Sure, I'm right. Well, look, Johnny, uh, you want to know anything about this burg, you ask me. You're Bill McGrogan. I know all about it, see? Okay. I know everybody ever comes into this town. Yes, sir, you need help? You couldn't have come to a writer party. Good. And me? Well, I'll be glad to give a guy like you a hand, see? Come on. And, uh, <clears throat> Johnny, you uh, know something else? Now, look, uh, McGrogan... Oh, just call me Bill, Johnny. Your name is Bill. Uh, you know something else? I uh, understand you pay out pretty good for information. Like, I mean, uh, you can lay it out on that uh, expense account of yours, huh? Yeah. Am I right, Johnny? Well, now, that depends. Ah, look, why don't you try me, huh? Anything you want to know about Interlaken or anybody in it, even just the summer people, you know, to come here for the summer, all you got to do is ask me. So what do you want to know, huh? And what's it worth, huh? Well, come on, come on, Johnny. You want my help, but don't you? (coughs) Who are you looking for, huh? Well, why'd you come here, Hey, you don't say much, do you? <laughs> All right, Bill. Yeah, yeah. I am looking for someone. A man. Ah, now what's it worth if I lead you right to him, Johnny? Fifty? Maybe you see no huh? Come on. Because if you don't think I can lead you to him, well, you just try me, see? Yeah, 25, maybe. Now look, you better come down a little bit, Bill. Let's see, uh... How about a 10 spot? Okay, thanks. What? Now, uh, who do you want to meet, huh? Who's the guy you're looking for? The name is Walla Doniger. Hey, you see, I told you to come to the right... You know, huh? What's the matter? Who, uh, who'd you say, Johnny? I said a man by the name Walt of... Walt Doniger? That's right. Well, you know where I can find him, or don't you? Well, oh, come on, Bill, what's the matter? Doniger, huh? <laughs> that crazy Walt Doniger. And you want to give me only ten bucks, huh? All right, I'll make it twenty if you really know where he is. Yeah, yeah, sure, I do, sure. But a guy that's loaded the way that he is, uh, you know that, don't you? And it sounds like Walla Donegan. Okay, Johnny, okay. Fifty bucks and I fix it up. What do you mean you fix it up? I'll deliver, I'll deliver. All right, Johnny. So uh, where are you going to be staying? Well, matter of fact, I don't know. I uh, I hadn't really planned Well, a to... Lodgemont. So you go to Lodgemont. It's that uh, nice, fancy place about uh, three blocks over that way. Yeah, well, look, look uh, over there. Turn your head, huh? You can see the top of it with the flag on it. See it over there? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I see. Ah, that's good. Now, you get yourself a room, see. And, Johnny, I guarantee I'll get the word to Donaga, and he'll be there and see you by sometime tonight. Okay? Now, look, Bill, wouldn't it be a lot easier just to tell me where you can find him? With the way that he moves around? Oh, sir. That's the deal. Fifty bucks, Johnny. All right. Here's fifteen more. And the other half you get after I see Donaga. Oh, yeah. Well, now, listen, Johnny. That's my deal. Just be sure you get him out of my room at the Larchmont. What if he shouldn't come through and bring me down again? Well, after all, it would go on the expense account. As soon as I'd registered at the Larchmont, I went to police headquarters and talked with a Sergeant Holloway. You know something? Maybe it was lucky that I had run into Bill McGrogan. Maybe. Well, uh, sure, sure, Dollar. I'll try to find that crazy old man for you. 
Yeah, be at the lodgement, you say, huh? That's right. But the way he gets around, you know, uh, well, in a couple of weeks ever since he got the word of his sister passing away, he's lived in a half dozen different Roman houses. Sometimes only two or three days in one place at a time. Mm. He is playing a cozy little game with the company. Uh, what's that? Oh, nothing. I certainly hope you can find him for me. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Maybe in a couple of days. Maybe in a half an hour. <laughs> but I'll find him all right. I mean, uh, sometime. Sometime, huh? Well, I'll be waiting. At the Larchmont, I had cocktails and dinner at item three, four seventy. Then I spent item four. Half a dollar on a phone call to Maury Partry to let him know where I was. What if that policeman doesn't find them for you, Johnny? Or that railroad bum you talked to? And with time running out for us... Then I'll just have to prowl around myself and see what I can learn about Doniger. Oh, of course, the post office. What? Huh? Well, if he moves from place to place, Maury, the way the sergeant says he does, he may have himself a post office box. And you'll sit by him until he shows? That's right. But what if he's left? Well, then I'll dig me up an atlas and figure out his next destination. Maury, don't worry about it. We've proved the atlas theory works, and now it's just a matter of time before... Well... What? Looks like it's going to be a matter of no time at all. Well, Johnny... Maury, I'll be in touch. Coming, coming. Yes? Inside, buddy, and shut up. Wait, what... Well, I know they'd get you on me, Dollar, but I didn't think you'd show up this soon. Well, now, look. Don't move. The gun works. Ooh. Complete with silencer, huh? That's right. So I'm not as crazy as some people think. And you're Walter Doninger? That's right. Scrappy Doninger. I'll move over there, Dollar, next to the bed. So when you fall, it won't make any noise. What do you mean, fall, Doninger? I've taken no chances with you. So from here on, Dollar... You're going to be dead. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the microwave filter cigarette. Yes, people who want to get away from harsh, rough-tasting cigarettes know that the one to switch to is Kent. And there's a very good reason why. Kent, with the Micronite filter, refines away harsh flavor, refines away rough taste for the mildest taste of all. Yes, that's your reward for smoking Kent, the cigarette that made the filter famous. So when you want to get away from harsh, rough-tasting cigarettes, remember, the finer the filter, the milder the taste. And you decide to treat your taste kindly with Kent. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the Micronite filter cigarette. Oh, wait a minute, Donegan. You haven't even got time to say a prayer, Dollar. You said you knew I'd be after you? Why not? Full of heist up there in Hartford? Stuff's going to be insured, isn't it? A heist? So who else would they get to look for me? Only how you ever found out that I'd come down here to this little jerkwater summer resort. And I'd only been here for a day, too. And only you pulled a boo-boo coming here, Dollar. It looks like I've pulled a couple. Yeah, wise man. You sure picked the wrong guy to buy information from. You think that Bill McGrogan was on your side? And for a hundred bucks, he let me set you up this way? I see. You do, huh? Well, you're not going to be seeing for long or hearing either. Get over there next to the bed where you'll drop real easy when I pull this trigger. Huh? Who's that? Who is it? Who is it? The split second when he turned to the door was all I needed. I charged across the room swinging and caught him a hard right to the face. And I chopped across the back of his neck with my hand and I got him with everything I had. The last in a heap. They lay very still. All right, now, Mr. Scrappy Donninger, we'll take this gun of yours. And... Yes, who is it? Who's there? Walter D. Donninger, the seventh, Mr. Dollar. Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, here I am. The police and you and the 
insurance company have finally found me. So, Mr. Do... Oh, my goodness. Who's he? What happened to him? Your name is Walter P. Doninger the Seventh. Why, yes, of course it is. Would you like to see some identification, Mr. Dollar? Here. I have plenty of it. But I certainly didn't think even a clever man like you could trade me here to interlock so quickly. It's amazing, Mr. Dollar. Simply amazing. Sit down, Mr. Doninger. You see, I had hoped I could delay you a bit, and therefore increase the insurance payment. But I was fair in my little game now, wasn't I? Just sit down there, Mr. Doniger. Well, surely, Mr. Dollar, anything you like. Uh, but this man here on the floor. Yes, this man. Just, just wait. Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Morris. Now listen. Now listen very carefully. I, I told him I have you already tied up on a case. Maury. A tri-state insurance up there in Hartford, I mean. But you'd never guess why they called, Johnny. Oh, wouldn't I? Why they want you. And right away. You'd never guess if you live to be a thousand. Don't be too sure, Maury. There's been a big burglary job up there, Johnny. And now listen. I'm listening. Talk about coincidence. The man I... I mean the crook thereafter has the same name as this client of ours. Walter, Walter P. Doniger. Yeah, yeah. Only the P stands for something else. They call him Scrappy Doniger. And he has a record from here to there. Murray. There's a $10,000 reward on him, too. So as soon as you find our Mr. Doniger... Murray, would you listen to me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have him, Murray. Right here. Oh, yeah. Oh? Oh, uh, oh, well, good. Uh, fine. Good for you, Johnny. Uh, I knew you'd find him and save us that extra money. Good man. Now, would you like to do me a favor and save me a phone charge? Well, sure. All right. Call Tri-State back. Tell them the job is done. Their job, and they can I... mail me the check for that reward. What? That's a fact, Maury. I'm up to here in Doniger's. <laughs> So for once, I got real lucky. And now you can see why I've called this report the Doniger, Doniger matter. Expense account total, including the trip home with Scrappy Doniger in tow, one fifty-five seventy plus commission, of course, plus the extra thousand on Walter the seventh. Oh, uh, and I couldn't find Bill McGrogan again, so he'll never get that other twenty-five bucks. Maybe just a jail term someday for the kind of company that he keeps. Yours truly. Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Jack Arthur, Jack Grimes, Ian Martin, Santos Ortega, Melville Ruick, and Neil Fitzgerald. Music supervision by Eugene Sines. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical supervision by Mike Shoskis. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Art Hannah speaking. <laughs>